This head is flawlessly straight, all done in my garage. I'm going to show you how to make your surface flawlessly straight along with the camshaft that it doesn't bind and that's not twisting, all with regular garage tools for next to nothing without touching a machine shop. Keep watching. So I checked the block for flatness, the cast iron block, and it is laser straight. Um, not even a slight bow to it. So that's good. That's pretty common with the cast iron block. However, common to every single aluminum cylinder head I've ever taken off, it is warped. So we're going to straighten it. So just as important as the bottom being flat against the head, so you got a ceiling surface, is where the cam rides, you need that to be straight. Otherwise, if it's bowed, the cam is bending on every single ro rotation and it's going to snap. So we'll check that real fast. And we are, I'm just, it's between 15 and 20 thousandths. Somewhere in there, you can't get it perfectly, but we can bend that back, and I'm going to show you um, that and the the other surface. And we are, if I recall, about seven thousandths, maybe eight, eight starts to move it. So it's about eight thousandths warped in the middle. So we're actually going to heat bend it back. You can take everything out, all your valves, everything else, put it in an oven, 450 degrees for hours, bolt it down to a surface that's gonna hold it straight, and then check it again. We're gonna use the oxyacetylene method and actually bend this straight with the original block. Now if I just take the cylinder head and throw it right back down on here and bolt down, say the middle, because it's bowed like a banana like this, um, it will actually straighten itself out pretty dang close but not perfect because I want it to over bend just a little bit so when it cools it's straight so since this is laser straight what I'm gonna do is we just have a soda can this happens to be four thousandths thick we're gonna put it on each end we're going to put the block on top and we're gonna bolt down essentially just the middle two we'll bolt down these maybe two of these as well so maybe six out of the eight cylinder head bolts, the original ones, and see if we can get it to pull back in. Because you'll see people just sand the bottom. You just sand the bottom, and that's only halfway there, because you can't have your camshaft bending. It's just going to snap and cause wear and cause more trouble. Okay, I've got six bolts. i got these two and these two. I don't have any out here because I don't really need them. So these two are probably at, I would say, 75, 80 foot-pounds, and these ones are about 50 foot-pounds. And what I've done is I've taken my gauge here. Let's see. Let me get you guys in here. And I've slowly tightened it down, and I've got it down to, I don't know if you guys can see. Oops, okay. I'm down to, it's hard to measure exactly, but down to about one thousandth. Yeah, so just barely I'm bowed upwards still. The head is actually bent downwards a little bit. And I can't even fit a filler gauge between the block and that. But that's fine because the next step is actually we're going to heat it. Yes, we're going to use it. Oxyacetylene, I don't think propane would work. Map gas, I don't think that would work. you got to do oxyacetylene. And we're going to heat it up here at the top. And what that's going to do is, you know, you heat it and then when it cools, it contracts. And the top up here that's under, you know, a ton of tension is actually going to relax and pull in. The bottom has been heated and cooled its entire life. It's an, it's an engine. So that's caused the bottom to contract and contract. So the bottom's under a ton of tension and it's actually pulling out on the top, creating this banana. And we're just going to equalize that by heating up here. And we're gonna take the oxyacetylene and just in these areas in between the webs, we're just gonna heat up till it starts to melt the aluminum. And then we're just gonna come off real fast. The rest of it, aluminum dissipates heat so fast that nothing around the valve train, this 
coil springs or anything will get anywhere more than mildly warm. You know, I would be surprised if they broke 100 degrees. So just boom, 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 and we'll go from there. This is a cutting tip, but I'm just using it for heating. Cutting tip for everything. I'll show you what it does, and we'll keep moving along. Turn you guys off, but just like that, just looks like a little mark. Um, that's just some impurities that popped up out of the out of the cast aluminum. So I'll just do that a couple times around both sides, and we'll be done. Okay, no tension. And completely relaxed. I have about five thousandths. Three to four. Which was, you know, 15 to 20 to before. We're a heck of a lot straighter. And actually, if you just bolted that down, I bet you'd be pretty good. I want to do it one last time. We might need bigger shims over here, but we're going to torque it down one last time. And I'm going to do a heat one more time and we'll be done you can see some of my heat spots some of them got that one get a little carried away with most of them look like this now i'm just going to heat in between those spots and on both sides see if we can get it to even out completely i heated it up a third time i doubled up my shims so I have two on each side, so roughly eight thousandths on each side. And now, and I bent it down, which seemed when I measured off these kind of flatter surfaces, about five or six thousandths low in the middle. Heated up the last time, so I've heated up three times overall. And this thing, right now there's no tension on it. This thing is laser straight. I mean, there's not even, you couldn't take this, you couldn't machine this. Straighter, straighter than that. And I wanted to put the cam in, and these aren't torqued very tight, just to see if the cam was happy. And it is. I mean, I have the valve buckets removed, so the valves aren't, well, they kind of touch right there and there, but I can see how much resistance, and there's, there's no resistance on the cam at all. So we are good. So now we just have to worry about the flatness of the block, of the, the cylinder head mating to the block. Let's take one and a half thousandths, my skinniest feeler gauge. Nope. See? The head straightened itself. Oh, there's a little bit. Look at that. nice and straight let's see if we can we actually do we have a little bit we are about two thousands high right here so this side is a little bit domed like this and this one's perfectly flat i do have a little dip around like this passage and a couple of these passages let's Nowhere even near. We're look. We're looking at like two thousandths versus the uh, seven to eight thousandths that I was before. So now we need to make this flat. I and mean, actually, the two thousandths or something with the head. You look up the specs. I think that's well within specs that a head gasket will take out that. But now we can actually make this as flat as the top. Um, we end. A, we actually end up having to sand it a little bit, and that's easy enough. Let me show you that. Okay. I know my block is flat. So I'm actually going to use that for my sanding surface, and I'm going to use this. This is automotive um, sandpaper. I should be able to get two strips on here. Not to...
This is 120 grit. There we go. Ready? You can do this with glass. People put on glass. I've done it on marble countertops. Stuff like that. You can see all the high spots, low spots, and it's beautiful. Started off with 120, finished off with 220. And then I actually even flipped the sandpaper and put it on the bottom of the cylinder head and just kind of touched this just to make sure there was no pieces of gasket or something I didn't see and just put a light haze on it, nice surface finish. And then if we look right here, take our straight edge. This is my skinniest one, which is one and a half thousandth. There's some light staining and stuff right here um, that the sandpaper is just barely starting to touch, so we're good. We're, you know, under uh, half a thousandth right in these little areas. And you want to take off as little as possible. Can't even get the feeler gauge in there. So I'm going to stop right there because I think we're good. Nice surface finish to it. So if you've been watching the VW truck series, this is, this is its engine. So that's a little bit of a sneak peek. I just thought this was a video of its own. Um, down in the video description, I'll put more details. Like, what about if your block's not straight? Can I use a piece of glass? Can I use, you know, marble countertop, something else? Because those aren't always straight. And what tools do I absolutely have to have? Down in the video description. But thanks for watching, guys. And if you want to actually see this on the engine and see this running, uh, you'll have to watch the VW series. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Hey. I'm pretty sure this bag of beef jerky was uh, full when I left it on the seat. Do you remember this one? Hmm? Oh, you're very cautious right now. Is somebody in trouble?